Matt Gates is about to start his fourth term in Congress. He just cruised to re-election. He's got some fans out here. He does. Well, he just cruised to re-election in Florida's first district, where he served since 2017. Now, as Republicans are set to take control of Congress in just a few weeks, investigations are at the top of the agenda. But Matt Gates says Congress needs to be held just as accountable as the Biden White House. We're going to find out just what he means by that. Please welcome to our show in Nashville for the very first time, Congressman Matt Gates. So I got to ask, did you bring the fan club with you? And uh, are these folks that just have seen you on TV and they already like you? I just assume that it's the holiday spirit. It's... We've come through a time of Thanksgiving. We're headed to Christmas. And the only thing that makes this Florida man a little nervous is when I see these snowflakes falling in the background. Because in my state, when it snows, we call out the National Guard and shut down the schools. Yes. So the fact that other humans can live through that is very impressive to me. Well, the only snowflakes we're going to try to shoot down tonight are the ones in Washington who are scared of their own shadow. And there are a bunch of them. I'm going to jump into a, a big topic. And, and it's one that, quite frankly, I'm not sure you and I see completely eye to eye on. I'm going to get your perspective. You have said, along with a, a small handful of other Republicans going into Congress, that you don't want to vote for Kevin McCarthy to be the speaker. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just curious. Why not? And what will you accomplish if you oppose him? Um, I mean, is there any chance that somebody else would be elected speaker? I think about 98% of the people who support Kevin McCarthy for speaker live inside the beltway of Washington, D.C. Because as I travel the country and talk to our dedicated patriots, folks would be far more excited about the candidacy of Jim Jordan from Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Jim's been on the show, love or, him to death. Or any, any number of other fighters. Yeah. And, and here's my critique of McCarthy. Decision points really expose how someone thinks about the fight that we are in. And Kevin McCarthy has failed the test of leadership time and again. I remember at the beginning of this Congress when I said it was untenable for Liz Cheney to be the conference chair. Yeah. Kevin McCarthy stood up and backed Liz Cheney and only came to the conclusion I was at many months later. I remember after January 6th, when we needed to expose the lies and false narrative of the media and the left, Kevin McCarthy was circulating a censure motion against Donald Trump and saying on a sniveling phone call that Trump ought to resign. And then I remember when I verbally criticized Liz Cheney, Kevin McCarthy said that I was gaslighting violence. Even the last time we were in the majority, Kevin McCarthy was the majority leader. And when Jim Jordan and Ron DeSantis and Mark Meadows and I wanted subpoena power to expose the corrupt activities of the deep state, Kevin McCarthy sat silent as Paul Ryan blocked every subpoena request that we submitted. Paul Ryan has backed Kevin McCarthy. A lot of the establishment figures that I think took our party in the wrong direction seem to be enthusiastic about his speakership. But I'll tell you this, we have the votes to block him. And I think we ought to get to the business of picking someone that represents the conservative center of our caucus someone who will diffuse power from the speakership, empower the members, and get us to the fighting force that our country deserves. But Matt, even, even Jim Jordan and Marjorie Taylor Greene, both of whom have been on our show, and we loved having them, both of them are supporting uh, Kevin McCarthy, who I like. I, I, I've known him a long time. I like Kevin McCarthy. And, and maybe he's not as stout as, let's say, a Jim Jordan would be uh, in some ways. Um, I guess I'm asking, if you block him, then what happens? Do well, the Democrats end up with enough votes that they can put a speaker in place? That, that is a false narrative. The Democrats have 212 votes. they got to have 218. It takes 218, and there are not six Republicans. I don't think there's a single Republican who has even expressed any willingness to vote for a Democrat. So I think that is a threat that is constructed by a lot of the folks in the swamp of Washington that want a speaker beholden to the lobbyists. You know what argument people make for Kevin McCarthy? He is the LeBron James of special <laughs> interest fundraising. No one extracts more money from the lobbyists and special interests than Kevin McCarthy. But I think that ought to be disqualifying, not qualifying. 
I frankly think that federal lobbyists shouldn't even be able to donate to members of Congress. Like, how is it the people yeah, I who are that. paid yeah. to influence our vote then get to give us money, and then you act like that doesn't influence how members of Congress think about now things? Now, you do That's realize cool. that if Kevin ends up being speaker after all, you'll be on the committee to monitor the quality of Girl Scout cookies for the rest of your term in Congress. So there may be a price to be paid. Well, look, you know, apostling ain't easy. You know, sometimes you got to get in the fight. And I see how our people feel let down by the folks who just play the game the same way. I'm tired of watching Washington just serve as a geography where both sides are fighting over who gets to be the valet for the special interests. And you know what? This this slim majority was disappointing to many, yeah. but it may give us an opportunity that even a large majority wouldn't have presented to actually upset the apple cart, to drain the swamp, and to not trust the biggest alligators there to do it. You know, there's no doubt that virtually everything you've said about the lobbyist power is absolutely true. Obviously, my monologue, that's what I'm talking about. And as well, the frustration of seeing Republicans when they get in power and yet then they just want to be kind and sweet. Look, I'd love to be the kindest person in politics, but that's when you get hurt. Well, that's when you go to the line of scrimmage and the guy across from you is coming at you with full speed. And if you say, I just want to be very kind and I don't want to even hit you, you're going to get run over. And that's what's happened to us time and again. I know the gospel tells us to turn the other cheek, but... If it's all the same to you, I'm more an Old Testament Republican, and an eye for an eye sounds pretty good to me. Uh, there is some value in that. Politics is like, I, I tell people, because they say, well, how as a Christian can you engage, you know, in, in the battle? I said, the same way that an NFL football player engages, he may be the nicest person and sing wonderfully in the church choir on Sunday, but Sunday afternoon, when he lines up at the line of scrimmage, if he doesn't hit hard, he won't last more than 30 minutes in his entire NFL career. So, no, I, I totally get that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you will now. The button is just below this video, and there's a little bell next to it. If you click on those, YouTube will reluctantly start letting you know when we've got a new video uploaded.